by Francesco Totti, which has decided this round of 16 tie between Italy and Australia. Let's go back to Kaiser Slatten now with Les Murray and Craig Foster. Thank you, Andrew. Craig Foster is with me. Uh, Foz, uh, we watched the game together. It, uh, we saw Australia dominate, uh, well, for all of it just about. Uh, man advantage, no goals, and then that tragic uh, and, a, and a bad decision by the referee, I think. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't see a penalty in it, to be honest. Um, Lucas went down, and he went down a little bit too early, but then, uh, you know, whoever the player was has gone around him and over him, and then there was no contact, and he's just gone down. So, um, you know, we left ourselves in that position. That's the problem. You know, we left, we left Bresch out wide, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in the last minute of injury time. You just can't do it. And, uh, you know, in the end, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a... It's a refereeing decision that, you know, you can give. That's the problem. You know, it's not a penalty, but you can give it. You know, it's, it's a 50-50 it's a situation. Some refs would and some refs would. The guy, the guy he hasn't been contacted, he's gone down and it's killed us. The, what, is, what is very sad and frustrating uh, for, for, for us is that we had that man advantage for such a long time. And uh, when that happened, we thought, well, Australia was surely in. Uh, and we couldn't convert. Was that, was that good tactics by the Italians? Uh, to keep us out, or was it inexperience on the part of the Australians? I think it was a good move by Lippi when he brought Toddy on, actually, mm. because um, until then, you know, we had them pinned in their half. You know, we, we said at half time that they're starting to put us under pressure, and then we came out. You know, they went down to ten men, and we had them, you know, really under pressure in their half. He brings. They had no link between, you know, the, your Quinta up front and the defenders and the midfield, and they're just, you know, they've got someone up here and they've got miles of acres of space and we're just cutting everything off at the back and they couldn't keep the ball he brings toddy on it's a brilliant move because the guy starts getting on the ball and all of a sudden you've got creativity and all of a sudden we're going back it's like hitting when when he brought on the quick players against netherlands you know he created us a problem and uh but having said that you know the boys played a, they played a a fantastic match you know they played a you know top sorry but it's a top class opponent you mm. know and and they really played well yeah, yeah, they did. No, that's, that's the spe specifics, and no doubt we'll uh, sum up the Australian performance generally in this World Cup in, in, in the next days to come, yeah. boys. But yep. how do you look back on this, uh, on this generally? I mean, it's been a, a fantastic ride, hasn't it? Uh, and to lose to Italy in that goal in the last minute of stoppage time in a second-round match is, uh, has been uh, some achievement. Yeah, well... Yeah, it has. Look, it's been, a, it's been an amazing journey for the, for the players and for the team. They are, you know, we couldn't be more proud of them. You know, the way they played today, the way they took Italy on in the first half, you know, they, for, for large periods, beautiful football, you know, good, good angular play, we're keeping the ball. Every single player played well. Um, second half, it was there to be won. It's not always easy playing against 10 men, you know, it's not. It's an old cliche in football, but hey, you know, it's, it's Italians are the best defenders in the world. Mm. You saw when we're getting it into the box in Viduca's feet. We never got enough runners off him in the game mm. for me, but, um, you know, when you're playing a, a world power and Hiddink doesn't want to, you know, go to the races and leave himself light at the back and, you know, and, and they score early in the game. So. To me, you know, I, I, I honestly thought 10, 15 minutes out, you know, you bring on Kennedy again because they're just sitting in their box, you mm. know, and, and everything's coming into the feeder in the air. They're so very good at clearing it, uh, but they never should have got us late in the mm. game. You know, mm. we shouldn't have allowed that goal. And, uh, but, you know, look, fantastic time. Mm. You know, the guys have been absolutely outstanding. Mm. They've shown the world that they could play. They pushed Italy all the way today. They showed pace and patience when they were against 10 men, still played some great football. Um, and they'll go out with us proud of them and, uh, you know, all of Australia knowing that, you know, they're a genuine top-class bunch of guys. All right, Craig, thank you very much. That's the picture from here in uh, the Fritz Walter Stadium, Australia out of the World Cup. More summations and analysis of what happened today uh, in future programs. But for, you, for the moment, back to you, Andrew. Yes, sir. Thank you, Les. And we're going to look at that penalty decision again and just you make up your own mind because it was terrible indeed so late in this match and it was Fabio Grosso who went down the tackle came in from Lucas Neal but as Craig Foster just pointed out here he is beating Bresciano Bresciano was perhaps caught out there and then across comes Lucas Neal slides in the ball goes by him and uh, just the momentum and the trailing foot of Grosso almost went searching for the foul you have to say but was it 50-50? That's what Craig said, guys. Again, looking at it at close inspection. Raleigh, what do you think? To me, it's just absolutely no penalty at all. 
probably something to do with the way that Bresciano tackled in the first place and second was Neil, but Neil did not tackle, he was on the ground. To me, absolutely. And Ned pointed out one thing, that send-off also was wrong in the first place. So that's a second send-off, you know, in a serious uh, situation as such as the World Cup, if any we can be critical, no one in the world can criticize the effort of these players mm. and, uh, and everything else. But what spoils this tournament year after year, FIFA makes decisions two, three months before, and then they introduce new rules. That rules are applied to the letter, and only player is suffering. And decisions like this are absolutely disgraceful. disgraceful. Mm. And the most responsible is FIFA, nobody else. Ned, referees are told to get tough usually. Mm as Rally says when it comes to World Cup time and especially to clamp down on things like simulation and dangerous tackles. I mean, what do you think of the officiating at this yeah. World Cup, taking into account what you saw today and especially yeah. Yeah. Portugal and that match we saw with them against Holland? There's just been too many crucial errors. Uh, and if you look at that, uh, that scene where he's given the penalty, I mean, uh, the referee was like five metres away. So really, he's in a position to see something like that. And, uh, and uh, you know we've talked about the referees all tournament uh, but the refereeing just hasn't got any better well let's go back to Kaiserslautern now and speak to uh, Simon Hill our match commentator Simon it's uh, obviously as you can appreciate terribly disappointing for all of Australia tonight but on the bright side of course getting so far was a wonderful achievement what do you make of it all well, everything that uh, everybody said, I agree with. Uh, Australia were fantastic, not just uh, throughout the tournament, but they were, I thought they were fantastic tonight. Uh, probably the only thing that they didn't do was uh, force Buffon into, into making enough saves, and it's, it's, it's such a hard way to go out of the World Cup when uh, your star defender, as Lucas Neal has been, one of the star players of the whole tournament, um, gives away the penalty. And I, Look, I'm not sure it's a penalty either, but um, look, the thing I'd, I'd like to pay tribute to is, is the players and the, and the coach you know, Hussidink, it's the end of an era tonight for Australian football, if you like. It's only been a short era. Uh, it's only been about eight months, hasn't it? But uh, what a fantastic time it's been for Australian football. And, you know, once we've all got over this result, I think we'll look back uh, with a lot of fondness at this era. And it was the, the sort of the time that, uh, in Australian football history that it, it came of age. Uh, and these players will go down as legends for the kids that are coming up and have watched these finals and will now become football fans because of these players and maybe because of Hussidink. So that's the legacy they leave. But... Uh, I appreciate that at the moment it's a bit tough it is but what on the future because uh, you bumped into Gerard Houllier who's one of the candidates if you like being linked to the Socceroos job in the future you've been there in camp and we all knew before this World Cup that Hiddink would be leaving after the tournament Simon are we any closer to knowing who might come in or when an appointment might be made well, no, we're not, in all honesty, Andrew. I mean, uh, Frank Lowy obviously is the man who has the final decision on that. And as far as we all know, his, his top choice is Julia. Uh, the, the latest that I heard was that um, he was going to give him to the end of the world. To that match and get his thoughts, of course, this tournament was another one of his miracle runs, you may call it, after taking South Korea to the semi-finals, And he was inches away from going to the quarterfinals. Let's hear from the Dutch master tactician after the match. The eighth final are also known as the knockout stages. You were really knocked out in the worst possible way. Yeah, my, what, what, what is my reaction? Brilliant knockout. Uh, it's, it's a knockout at, in the last uh, dying seconds of the game. And uh, overall, overall, you can have and the doubts about the, ref, the, 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 the penalty. The free kick was, was not, in my opinion, free kick. But overall, we are knockouts. And I can be very proud of the guys, of the boys who performed so well on this World Cup in all the three matches and this match against uh, one of the powerhouses of Europe. I think we controlled and dominated them. The only thing we can uh, blame ourselves is that we were not having the lateral pass and uh, the goal we, we deserved. So general feeling is, of course, just after the game, we are very disappointed because we were so close. Uh, but I can be proud of the way they played. I think this is uh, a way uh, the world loves to see uh, a, a, a team playing. You were searching for that winning goal throughout the second half, and yet you were not able to score it. Is that the difference between Australian football I and think now? So. And I think so. I think you can, uh, if you analyze this uh, rather cold, then I think the, the big difference is that we, we play. We play. We try to play a good football. We try to play attractive football. But at the end, you must make of that attractive football a result. And that's the difference between the two teams. I think they are more lateral 
in uh, in the area and uh, although they didn't make many chances i think that's that's the difference between the two teams